So it was my birthday this month and what do you get for your birthday besides a bunch of books? And I also got a new Kindle so I'm very excited about all of these book possibilities. So I did get all these books second hand off of eBay. One I did thrift to myself on my actual birthday and I was like pumped. So let's go over all of these books. I'm adding it to my endless TBR pile but hopefully I'll get to these eventually. So first up is the one book that I thr did thrift myself on my birthday and it's The Celebrants. So this is by Stephen Riley. He's the same person who wrote Gunkel. I haven't read Gunkel yet, but I've only heard good things about it and how funny it is. So I knew for sure I wanted to pick this up and I'm gonna say this is kind of a newer release. So when I found it at my thrift store, I was pumped. That's one of my tips for you guys. If you're not thrifting books at your thrift store, what are you doing? Because not everyone is a book collector. I'm not honestly a book collector. I normally read it and then sell it. So this book is about five friends who have been friends for decades who get together just about every year but one of the friends hasn't seen them all in five years and when they meet up he realizes that there's been a lot of ups and downs in their own interpersonal relationship and so definitely literary fiction there it says um, some blurbs on here it says it's a tender funny bittersweet exploration of friendship family joy grief and what it means to be alive and I loved everything about it so I'm not sure that this will like span throughout the other decades but it definitely will reference them and so I always like a book about friendship that talks about the friendship throughout the whole years um it's kind of a coming of age if you will so I'm excited about this one the next book I have is an Ellen Hildebrand Ellen Hildebrand is one of my favorite authors in terms of how she writes but I don't always love all of her stories if that makes sense like I think her writing just very consistent very clear very smooth but sometimes her plots are really lacking or her characters are just kind of not for me. So this is her first book that she ever wrote. So just kind of reading the back blurb here, it seems like it follows a lot of different characters who work at the beach club and the owner of the beach club, kind of in typical Ellen Hildebrand fashion. You're going to get a lot of different um, third person viewpoints on all of these characters and probably a lot of drama. That's just kind of how her novels work. And it's interesting to see, even in her first novel, it seems like it's very like character focused, character heavy. Um, so I guess that's really always been her formula and sometimes it works for me and sometimes it doesn't. I read her one of her books the other day that was one of her earlier books that was called The Love Season and it really fell flat and read it's outdated. Some of the terminology that they used was just like inappropriate nowadays. It's not something that would be that not something that would be politically correct nowadays she wrote that book in the early 2000s so I'm hoping that this one still has relevance today the next book that I got is a classic it's called In True Blood by Truman Capote I've heard about this book since I was probably in junior high and I've just never read it sometimes when it comes to the classics I think that in my mind I can bypass them because I'm like all of these new releases but I'm really trying to start to read some of the classic books that I've just missed out on and kind of circle back around to them the color purple last summer and I absolutely loved it they're actually making they're actually remaking the color purple movie and it's going to be a musical and I'm really excited about that and then recently I read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier I think is how you say her name and it was really fascinating as well definitely a good like slow burn thriller but this one is a true crime novel you're like me and your lover of 2020 and Dateline and you're just fascinated by the whole thing. I think this will definitely appeal to you. This follows the four members of the Clutter family who were savagely murdered by a blast from a gunshot held a few inches from their face. And there was no apparent motive for the crime and almost no clues. So just kind of outlining um, what happened and if there's an eventual killer in it. I've never heard of the Clutter family. Um, murder so it will certainly be interesting I always feel kind of like guilty by being fascinated by these things because I'm like this is so savage this is so disgusting that someone could do this why am I so interested and I think it's just because I just don't understand and I'm trying to seek understanding as to how someone could be this grotesque and savage and the next book that I got is called The Borrower. It's by Rebecca Mackay. I read um, I Have Some Questions for You earlier this summer by Rebecca Mackay and although I didn't really love 
I have some questions for you. It was just kind of like a long, slow drag. The writing was fantastic. So I knew I needed to read another Rebecca Mackay book. Okay, so as a former librarian, this plot really appeals to me. It follows a librarian named Lucy Hole, and essentially what Lucy's doing is it says she's the kidnapped and the kidnapper. So she has a 10 year old patron that comes in a lot. His name is. Yeah, that's what I thought. His name is Ian, and essentially Ian is being censored at home. His mom doesn't want him to read certain books, books about, you know, being gay. And so, she, you know, as a librarian, Lucy's like, well, this is wrong. He should be able to pick, make his own choices. There's a big book banning epidemic going on right now. I live in Texas and it's rampant here. I, every time I turn on the news, I feel like I'm hearing about another school district that is pulling hundreds of books off their shelf and it, it just breaks my heart, especially as a former children's librarian. So Alright, next up, this one is missing its book jacket. Just kind of, if you're like me and you're not a collector, I think that's totally appropriate, but if you're a collector, you probably wouldn't be too happy with this. But this is Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson, and I've only heard really funny things about this. Because it is missing the book jacket, I can't really give you guys a summary because it doesn't really have it, but based on what I know about this is I believe it's about parenting and kind of the trials and tribulations and it's handled in a really funny way. Um, this was a read with Jenna Pick and if you guys are interested in what the cover looks like, I'll pop it up here. If you see the cover, you'll know exactly what it is. I've seen the cover everywhere and a lot of people talking about nothing to see here. This book is called Elsewhere. This is by Gabrielle Zevin. I have read three of Gabrielle Zevin books and I'm now reading her backlog. So I've read Tomorrow Times 3. I've read The Story Life of A.J. Fickery and I've read The Teenage, um, I think it's like Diary of a Teenage Amnesiac. So um, Gabrielle Zevin actually started out in young adult and then she kind of transitioned to literary fiction in the adult world. So this is one of her young adult novels. So it is about a girl who dies when she is 15 years old and then she goes to elsewhere and it's like a different world and it says, is it possible that a life lived in reverse is no different than a life lived forward? So it sounds interesting. I don't really super know what it's about based on that and I've noticed in the YA world whenever I see that it's a square fish imprint it's typically a book that I like so obviously I really resonate with that imprint so I'm excited to read this one it's probably higher up on my list the next book here is another read with Jenna which I'm not trying to like seek out necessarily because I don't always like these like Reese Witherspoon read with Jenna Oprah's book club type of picks but they're definitely the ones that get a lot of notoriety and I heard Jenna Bush Hager on Ellen Hildebrand's um, podcast, Book Speech and Beyond, and they talked about this book in particular as being one of Ellen's favorite and one of Jenna's favorite and so I definitely did want to check it out. It's called Valentine by Elizabeth Wetmore. So this one seems like it's going to be a really intense read. This one takes place in 1976 in Odessa, Texas and it's talking about the oil boom and just kind of the greed around that. Um, it says that in the early hours of the morning after Valentine's Day, a 14-year-old girl, Gloria Ramirez, appears on the front porch of Mary Rose Whitehead's ranch house, broken and barely alive after a vicious attack in a nearby oil field. And then at the end, kind of the summary paragraph, it says Valentine is a haunting exploration of the intersections of violence and race, class, and region in a story that plums the depths of darkness and fear yet offers a window into beauty and hope. So that's a mouthful, um, but definitely does seem really intense, maybe a little bit similar to like the intensity of like American Dirt is what I'm thinking in my head as to compare it to. So this one seems like one that I probably am going to love, but I have to be in the right headspace to read. Definitely not one that you're going to take lightly. The next book that I have here has been on my Goodreads TBR since like the beginning of time and I finally got it and this is Suicide Notes from Beautiful Girls. This is a YA book. So it's about a girl named Delia. Everyone's saying that she burned herself alive and killed herself but her former friend June just doesn't believe it. She thinks that Delia is murdered and June is kind of forced to confront a night that happened. Um, a year ago between June, Delia, and June's boyfriend Ryan, it, the night just got out of hand and now Delia's dead and June's thinking that maybe there was foul play there so it seems like I kind of have a gist of maybe what happened that night but I could be wrong. Um, when you read a lot of YA books in particular you can kind of follow the track but 
if it's handled and written well then I think it'll be really good even if it is a story that I feel like is familiar and I might be wrong about my guess as to what I think happened. The next book I have here is called The Nix and this is by Nathan Hill. It says it's a national bestseller and I've seen this everywhere so I certainly do believe that. So it seems like this one's going to be one that probably spans like different timelines. I'm guessing on that but just based on like the little back blurb that I read. It says that it's 2011 and that Samuel, our main character, hasn't seen his mother, Faye, in decades. And now that she's reappeared, she's committed a crime that electrifies the nightly news and inflames a po politically divided country. It paints Faye as a 1960s radical, but as far as Samuel knows, his mother was just an ordinary girl who married her high school sweetheart. So Samuel has to kind of decide, like, which is true. And it will probably be especially hard for him to decide, to decide considering his mother like abandoned him. I don't know if any of you guys are the Simpson fans, but it kind of makes me think of um, Homer's mom, Mona Simpson, and how she committed some acts back in the day, and that's why she disappeared on him. If you guys are into that show, you probably know what I'm talking about. The next book we have here is called Anatomy of a Scandal. This was turned into a mini series. I watched, I think, the first episode, and then my attention span just drifted. I'm not a TV watcher for the most part. I like to watch things very passively, so nothing was wrong with the TV show. I just, I would rather read the book if there's a book. This is by Sarah Vaughn. It says, um, coming to Netflix, so I guess it was on Netflix. And it says, um, and basically it's about a woman named Sophie whose husband cheats on her. She kind of thinks she has the perfect life. She has a lovely home, two adorable children, and a handsome, successful husband. Basically, in other words, she thinks she has it all, don't we all, girl? Um, but James, her husband, comes home with a shocking confession, and suddenly her world turned upside down. I think he goes through the trial because he's being accused of some, um, he's being accused of sexually assaulting or sexually harassing the woman he had an affair with. I think it, that's the plot based on like what I watched in the show. Maybe the show was different. Like I said, I think I watched an episode and a half of the show, and Basically, especially in the Me Too movement, it's like making sure that we get all the facts. Do you believe your husband or do you believe this lady? What's going on here? So that seems like it'll be a loaded read. Next up, we have another YA book. This is called People Like Us. Totally giving prep school vibes on that. Okay, so reading the little cover here, I'm kind of getting like... 13 Reasons Why vibes. So it's about a girl named Kay Don Donovan who has skeletons in her closet, but she's trying to reinvent herself at her new school. A girl's body is found in a lake and Kay is the one who receives a computer coded scavenger hunt to figure it all out, which definitely reminds me of 13 Reasons Why when Clay gets the video tapes and he has to figure out like what happened to Hannah. So we'll see what happens. You can see on the back there, there's like one of the emails from them. So very YA. I like YA, but I do find at times that it is repetitive. Next up, we have Seven Dirty Secrets. This is by Natalie D. Richards. It takes place on our main character Cleo's 18th birthday where she receives a scavenger hunt, another scavenger hunt here. So she decides to embark on the scavenger hunt. She thinks it's something that either her friend or her brother set up, but as she goes through the clues, she realizes that it's actually made to help her solve her dead boyfriend Declan's murder and she's going to have to figure out what happened to him. There's obviously seven riddles, seven secrets that go on there. So can she solve the murder before she winds up dead or someone else? I like thrillers, but again, a little repetitive. Next up, we have The Lake. I believe this is another thriller. So another like slow burn thriller. So this is about two friends, Esme and Kayla. They were once campers at the Camp Pine Lake and now they are camp counselors. But although they really like being camp counselors, it's reminding them of something terrible they did when they were campers and the past is catching up to them. And up next we have another classic. This is The Fountainhead. It is a very thick novel. This one's probably lower on my list of what I anticipate reading. Um, we'll see when I get to this one. It's not that I don't want to read it, it's that I can tell I need to carve out some time and be in the right headspace to read this. So this was first published in 1943. So if you guys can hear the cars outside doesn't really tell me like what the book's about on the back cover just like it's acclaiming the book so maybe I should already know but 
It looks pretty interesting. This is the same author that wrote Atlas Shrugged, which I've also heard of, but I haven't read. But oh my goodness, look how tiny that text is. So I definitely could get this on my Kindle if I want to. I read multiple books at a time, so that might be one where instead of reading two books at a time, I'm reading three because that seems like it's going to be a lot. Up next we have The Half Moon. I've seen this book around a lot as well. This is by Mary Beth Keene. So this is about a couple, Malcolm and his wife Jess. So Malcolm is the bartender at The Half Moon and Malcolm has already always dreamed of opening up his own bar. Whereas his wife, Jess, she's always dreamed of being a mother and having a baby, but it doesn't seem like maybe that's in the cards for her. She's a lawyer, so it seems like it's literary fiction, just kind of talking about their relationship and, you know, kind of like your dreams versus reality. I'm now 29, which is crazy. And definitely as you get older, those preconceived ideas that you had in your head, when you were a child or a teenager, you're realizing like they're not coming to fruition in the way that you want. And sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. And it just seems like it's kind of going after that. Next up, we have a memoir. This is Open by Andre Agassi. Agassi, I don't remember how to say it, um, but he is a tennis player that's come as a little boy and it's an autobiography about his life. He's one of the most beloved athletes in history and one of the most gifted men to ever step on the tennis court. Married to Brooke Shields for a little bit. If you watched her documentary Pretty Baby, they talk a little bit about that relationship there. So I love a good autobiography. Normally I listen to them as an audiobook, but sometimes I'll read them as well. This one's pretty thick. Um, I don't really super follow tennis, but I do know a little bit about some of the like more well-known tennis players and I think this will be really interesting. I don't know, is it just me or did Carrie Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins Reid just kind of make everyone a little bit more interested in tennis. Up next, we have a book that I read when I was a sophomore in high school. This is The Catcher in the Rye. This is a classic. This is by J.D. Salinger, of course. So when I read this when I was a sophomore in high school, I was going through a lot. I was going through my parents' divorce and my brother leaving for college and just kind of like the backlash of the first major thing happening in my life that was just kind of unpleasant. And so I really resonated with the loneliness and driftlessness of our main character Holden Caulfield and I don't know that I still will now now that I'm in a different place in my life but I really did want to go back and reread this and explore do I still connect with this book um, certain books are in your life at certain times and you feel differently about them when you read them every time I reread my favorite book Little Women I find something new the first time I read Little Women I didn't really care for Joe and I really liked Amy which says a lot about me and then the second time I read it I was like totally all about Joe. I thought she was awesome and Amy was kind of bratty but I also saw where she was coming from and Meg's life to me was like kind of sad tangenting about that book. I could go on that book on about that book forever but just different things um different times when you read them so it's been Gosh, it's been 13 years since I've read this, so definitely in a different um, headspace when I'm going to read it this time. Next up, we have another classic. This is Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. And I've read one other Kurt Vonnegut book, and I honestly didn't love it. Um, just because someone is a famous author doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to like it. I think I read Slaughterhouse, Slaughterhouse, whatever it was, 40, Slaughterhouse 45 by him and I just didn't really get into it so hopefully I'll find this one a little bit more engaging. So on the back here it doesn't really tell me what this is about either. It just says that Vonnegut's black humor, satiric voice, and incomparable imagination has been captured in all of his novels so we'll see. <laughs> kind of a gamble on that one. Alright, this is my only like real deal kids book. I still do like to read the occasional kids books. Um, I seek enjoyment from certain ones. Some of them are a little bit too cheesy for me. But one of the one of my former students last year told me that I needed to get into the series and read it. So this is by one of the co-authors of the Spiderwick Chronicles, which was a series that I read when I was growing up. So this is called The Search for Wendla. 
and it's like sci-fi adventure so it seems really interesting because it's a modern classic about our main character Eva 9 a she's a girl fleeing for her life her only clue to survival well, an image of a girl a robot an adult with the word wonder on it the adventure is about to begin so that seems kind of trippy it gives me like Star Wars vibes which I'm not a huge Star Wars fan so we'll see if I don't like that book I might give it to my husband he's more into like sci-fi fantasy and that's all right some one of us will enjoy it this is holding up the universe this is by the same author of all the bright places which is also on my tbr but i haven't read it yet this is by jennifer niven it doesn't tell me much about what's going on in this book on the back cover it's another ya book it follows a boy and a girl so libby is like your popular girl who everyone knows jack is the guy who everyone's friends with and he doesn't let anyone in except for libby and the two make an unlikely pair Interesting. So they're both like really well known, yet they're an unlikely pair. But they gave me a pause. Um, and they might be able to change each other's universe, so we'll see. And the last book we have here is a nonfiction biography. This is called What Made Maddie Run? The Secret Struggles and Tragic Death of an All-American Teen. So this follows 19-year-old Maddie Holleran. She was a freshman at an Ivy League school. She was recruited for their track team. She was beautiful, popular, intelligent. She's someone who succeeded at everything. She tried, fiercely competitive. And Eventually she did end up unfortunately killing herself and it's just kind of about the mounting pressures that student athletes face especially when they are fiercely competitive like this when they have such high expectations placed on their shoulders you know it's one of those like Instagram versus reality looks can be deceiving it looked like she had it all it looked like she was on top of the world but she was really you know getting crushed under that pressure she was depressed and so just kind of following that journey and hopefully catching signs before anything happens you know having worked with children you're always on the lookout for signs and ways that you can prevent thing bad things from happening and help out as much as you can so i think this one is going to be one that really does break my heart but hopefully gives me a lot of insight and in how I could help someone in the future so that is my gigantic birthday book haul is there a better present no if you've read any of these books let me know in the comments down below your opinions but please no spoilers i will see you guys in the next video bye